uh, from Austin, Texas, where I've been the last five years. And before that, I lived in Eugene, Oregon uh, for a decade. And before that, I had uh, was in boarding school in Arizona and in California, and I grew up in Kansas. So uh, I've lived a lot of different places in the States. And we're going to be here for a year. Uh, my husband had uh, received a Fulbright uh, for scholarship at the University of Leeds. So. And a Fulbright scholarship means? It is uh, similar to um, like what a, a Rhodes Scholar. It's a it's it's an ambassadorship program, and one the State Department pays for it in America, and then other uh, governments will invite a certain amount of students over that are in line with uh, what kind of research they're looking for, and they're. Like he's working, he's a fellow with the Royal Society for the Arts, and they really look at, at community building, and that's one of the things of you know, working locally. It's all about. You know. So this word immortality, what does it mean to you? Why? why uh, is well, it Greek gods flapping their wings and uh, living from above the clouds, or what? Well, I, I think the exact definition is about uh, something without end, or I mean. And uh, immortality, I mean, to me, it would be, I, I think, a, a general view is, is if people are able to uh, live in a state where they're able to rejuvenate themselves or um, have healthier bodies or be impervious to many diseases or have stronger. Uh, there are different routes of looking at that. Some people take the, the biological way that they want to be immortal as, as humans, as some of the species that we have that have evolved with us on Earth that um, have the ability to live a lot longer than we do and have uh, negligible uh, sentience that they um, barely age or they're uh, like a bowhead whale that can live for you know, 200 plus years and uh, things that... What animal, sorry? Uh, bowhead, bowhead whale. Oh, a whale, um, right. It's a whale. And there are alligators and some turtles that, that don't age in the same as, what, as how we you know, age as humans. But the, um, there, there is a, like a hydrozoic as one celled creature that it, it's asexual and it after it reproduces it becomes younger to a state and then uh, we're uh, below sexual maturity and then it matures again so it actually gets younger and then grows up uh, so that's the only only thing I think scientists would say is actually considered immortal that something that has an indefinite lifespan that sense. Um, but that's an example that there's nothing in biology as such which condemns all organisms to die. Right. I mean, that's their, yeah. They're <laughs> okay. So that's biological immortality. You were hinting there were other kinds that you might be interested in. Yeah. Um, the other way is through technology, through uploading, and through uh, being able to put your your mind, your consciousness into a robotic body that has better senses um, that you can see and like, key vision and yeah, have stronger body. Yeah, please come in. But the Immortality Institute, um, yeah. it, it, it's funny that, you know, starting off with that name, the Immortality, because there have been Immortality Institute was started in 2002, uh, 2002 by Bruce Klein, and I became a member in 2003. Uh, I had met Bruce, he was an Alcor member, um, and I had uh, got my life insurance, I think, at age 25 to become a chronicist and signed up with Alcor. When I was 19, I had contacted CI and got their paperwork, and then I got a little bit older, I did. Alcor. But that's how I met Bruce, and so Bruce had invited me to the Immortality Institute, and I think I didn't really have an idea of what 
uh, a forum was for. I, I had a young baby at the time, and I was very busy, and he invited me to come do uh, an interview about calorie restriction. And I had lost 85 pounds with um, using calorie restriction and joining the the different support groups, and I met a lot of people that were um, in in the life extension community through the, the group of calorie calorie restriction. Uh, but that uh, the Immortality Institute, I, I said, you know, what do they do? Are they teaching people? I mean, what is it? And it, it, it took me a little while to sort of figure out that what its strength was was uh, for networking, for people to come together. They have the supplement forums where people will discuss what kind of, you know, the best vitamins and what sort of things to help extend your life. And then nootropics, like what you can take to help your brain. And then they have the chronics forum and uh, they also have, I mean, various other people have discussed politics. And then there, the nanotechnology and the singularity and the, I mean, that sort of the artificial intelligence. And there are the different umbrellas there. Uh, and what was found was that people would come and they'd, they'd learn about things like the Methuselah Foundation that Aubrey heads of you know, Cambridge. Probably most of you are familiar with that. And so a lot of people came in that would go and work with these other organizations that met it. The Immortality Institute and the Immortality Institute has done uh, a lot of things over the years um, and one of the major discussions that has been has come up recently has been should we change the name should the name be changed because immortality is such a loaded word from you know different religious standpoints or uh, many I mean, it's like a horrible for, uh, in some ways, you know, for PR and, and, and such. At, even with the name Immortality Institute, we've still been contacted by some reputable, um, you know, media and organizations, and <laughs> I think uh, Stephen Colbert, you know, uh, we got onto there, uh, but I think he liked kind of playing around with the, the name. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so he's an American uh, TV. TV, yeah. He had operated very on as well. But yep. uh, the the Immortality Institute was, was thinking of changing their name to something else, but the debates kind of come around. Well, even though we've been saddled with this name, we still have grown over the years. Um, we're not a very large organization, as some organizations, uh, with a, uh, looking at about, like, 30,000 in income, this probably for 09. Uh, we, we have done some really great things. We, uh, this past year in 09, uh, I'm also uh, on the board of directors for the Society of Interism, which is a group for people who are signed up as chronicists and they do um, advocacy and support for chronicists. And what they, the, the Society of Interism, uh, there was a, a man who was also in Mortality Institute, a longtime member who had uh, a long, long time back he helped put on the conference that uh, when Immortality Institute was getting started with Bruce and Georgia uh, before Bruce had moved out to California uh, to start Nova Mente, which he's working on now. Um, but what the this 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 um, this man had uh, contracted cancer at a pretty early age, and he didn't. He wasn't able to get life insurance, and he didn't have. Even though at one time he would have had the funds to pay up front for the chronics, most people um, pay for it out of the life insurance. And uh, since he didn't have the life insurance set up, he wasn't able to, and it, it was very unexpected to to be getting cancer at that age. Uh, the Society for Adventurism said that yes, they would raise uh, money for him to be preserved, and they've done this before for uh, Mars Johnson, who was one of the, uh, she was the president of 